My patriotic duty to ensure that people knew. I would have wanted to know. Linda Tripp, she nearly brought down the president when she helped to expose his affair with Monica Lewinsky, but she says now that the White House and Pentagon took their revenge by dragging her name through the mud and exposing her to public humiliation. And now she's suing for damages. Linda Tripp, does she have a case as crosstalk continues now? Welcome back to Crosstalk NBC. I'm David Gregory. We'll be joined by one of Linda Tripp's attorneys in just a moment. But first, a little bit of background on her lawsuit now from NBC Justice correspondent Pete Williams. In her lawsuit just filed in federal court, Linda Tripp claims that once her role in the Monica Lewinsky scandal became public, officials of the Clinton administration leaked damaging information about her to reporters. Her lawyer says that was done for one reason, to well, discredit was, her. Linda Tripp was going to be an important witness in a very large lawsuit involving the White House and the president. And the object was to intimidate, harass, and most importantly, destroy her credibility. In her lawsuit, she claims that the Pentagon spokesman improperly disclosed information from her personnel files, a statement she made that she'd never been arrested. Subsequent news stories said she lied on a security form because she had once been arrested. Her lawyers say the charges were later dropped. But Tripp accuses Pentagon spokesman Ken Bacon of violating her privacy, releasing the material from her files even though it was confidential. And her lawsuit accuses nearly a dozen White House employees of engaging in an unspecified conspiracy to harm her reputation. No comment yet from the White House or the Pentagon about the lawsuit, and Tripp is still a federal employee, still working for the Defense Department as a public information officer. Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. Pete, thanks very much. Uh, Alan Dershowitz is still with us from Boston, and joining us from a rainy Washington today is Stephen Cohn, who is one of Linda Tripp's attorneys in her civil lawsuit against the Defense Department and the White House. All right, Stephen, help me understand what the basis is here, because uh, the idea of questioning her credibility cannot amount to retaliation, can it? Well, I just want to correct one misimpression, okay. which is we have not sued Hillary Clinton or uh, various White House officials. Uh, two specific wrongdoers have been named. Uh, and just to make it very clear here, on the, it, it says right in the complaint, if you see, names the two and then says John and Jane Doe's. We have not gone out of our way to embarrass people or to drag people through. This is not an ideological lawsuit or a lawsuit to score some form of political brownie points. But, but what we have in this case are, is an extremely well-documented instance of a violation of federal law that was both civil and criminal. No one in the federal government has decided to indict the wrongdoers, but they ha and they've ignored Tripp's rights to privacy. But what occurred, and this is critical, is there's a security clearance form you have to sign and fill out. The information on that is covered by federal law. It, it, people have to fill these forms out. Disclosure of information on those forms, either orally or in documentation, is illegal unless it's done for a specific official purpose. We know through depositions and through documents that the persons responsible for implementing the Privacy Act got, in, got information from a journalist, went into that file, were told by the lower level employee who pulled it out that these are Privacy Act documents, that they told that lower level employee it was for official use, and that was not true. They obtained the information and then leaked it out in violation of law. Extremely well documented. So we walk into this suit with an extremely strong violation of law that was unquestionably done to get back at Linda Tripp. They were only asking these questions because she'd surfaced as a major witness. Do, do you believe, does uh, Linda Tripp believe that Hillary Rodham Clinton was behind an effort to discredit her? You see, there, we, we have no evidence of that at this point. We have circumstantial, extremely strong circumstantial evidence that persons in the White House initiated this process. Who are they? Well, if the journalist invokes privilege, we will do extensive discovery and find out. But this is not a suit trying to, to defame anybody. What we have here is a federal witness 
Linda Tripp made certain disclosures, certain information was illegally placed into the public domain that harmed her. Now, although the, those charges all proved to be nothing, it was a childhood prank and a bunch of garbage, when they were leaked, the Secretary of Defense himself said, these are very serious, maybe we'll have to do something to Linda Tripp. They thought they had a smoking gun that could either get her fired or her security clearance lifted. They thought they could take Linda Tripp out as an effective witness. So what they did was they violated the law. And remember, this was a politically charged time. People were rushing to Clinton's defense. And in this case, they really thought they could take Tripp out. It backfired. But those violations stand. Alan, is there a case here? Well, I think there is a case here. It's a slightly different case than the one I think that's been presented in the media. Surely there is a case, if what we've heard is true, that uh, for improper motivations, government officials leak confidential information for political purposes that they were not authorized to leak. That sounds like a pretty good case. Any claim, however, of defamation, any claim, however, of trying to simply uh, destroy her credibility, hey, that's part of the adversary system and part of the marketplace of ideas. Uh, Linda Tripp helped discredit herself. There was a lot of self-vilification here. People in America don't like people who go around taping uh, their friends. On the other hand, I have to tell you, I am upset at the fact that my government and the government of Maryland has gone after Linda Tripp selectively in trying to prosecute her for taping calls when they would never do that right. if it didn't have a political context. Yeah, but you know, As I'm, a civil libertarian, I am very concerned about what our government government does to its citizens but when they not But let me popular. stop you there because, uh, Stephen Cohn, uh, you know, certainly in, in, you all have made this argument before that this was a selective prosecution in Maryland, and it I is. can't let this point go by because it's so interesting that when the Clinton White House made the same argument about selective prosecution or investigation when it was Ken Starr, everybody who was aligned with Linda Tripp raised their hand and said, wait a minute, the law was violated, period. You violate the law, you suffer the consequences. It's a good point. It's a good point. Right? Well, if I may address that. Go ahead. Uh, David, uh, two points. One is Mr. Clinton, President Clinton, has not been indicted for perjury or obstruction of justice. Linda Tripp has been indicted. That's first. And all those prose uh, d uh, prosecutors who stepped forward and said, oh, this wouldn't lead to an indictment. Well, maybe they'll, they're right. But the second point is much more significant. Linda Tripp, the, the conversation that she was indicted for, the December 22nd conversation, you must understand that in its context. First, that conversation occurred after Linda Tripp and Monica Lewiski were friends. In November, Linda Tripp sent an email to Monica Lewinsky and said, don't call me anymore. I'm sick and tired of it. Yet Monica Lewinsky admits in the book that she assisted in that she engaged in a campaign, a campaign to get Linda Tripp to lie under oath and obstruct justice. And on December 22nd, when you look at that transcript, it's like, this is perjury, this is subordination, this is obstruction right there in your face. And what you will find if you search the, the cases anywhere in this country, I have never seen a case where an American citizen faces 10 years in prison for documenting a felony unfolding before her eyes. And I've gone through these taping cases. There's no such thing. All I right. mean, you have to be able to defend yourself. All right, Stephen, let me just take a break here. We'll come back with Stephen Cohn, Alan Dershowitz. We'll also talk about Alan Dershowitz's new book, Just Revenge, new novel. We'll talk about that.